Let me tell you a little bit about CK12, and I'll speak poorly for my wife. I wish she could be here. But let's start with our mission. It's very, very clear, and I'll come back to that at the end, because every child, and CK12 is a nonprofit, open source uh, content play that's trying to do a lot more. Let me tell you a little bit about it, and I'll come back to our mission. It's used widely all over the world. There are a lot of components of global usage, so I see the screen in front of me. It's uh, hard to talk to everybody in a 360 stage. Um, there's a lot of schools using it. I won't read the statistics for you, but I will point to one statistic I'll come back to. There's 167 million questions answered on CK12 testing students. Well, 46 million of them for uh, about 8,000 concepts. So what does CK12 have? Content. It has data about the content, metadata as it's called in data circles. Uh, it has the ability through a software system to standards align and it's meant to be curriculum with any state or national standard. So a software system takes the general body of content and assembles it into a state standard compliant system. It can do prerequisites, and I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, it's a learning continuum, and uh, if I have time, I'll come back and talk about this. But to think about CK12, think of the following. Imagine like the tube map of London, except you're dealing with concepts that students have to learn. All of high school STEM education can be broken down into about 5,000 concepts, maybe twice as many if you're really granular. And so imagine math as the green line of things you have to cover. And then there's sciences, lines, physics, chemistry, et cetera. If you hone in on one of these stations, which is, again, a concept you might want to learn, like radiative decay or photosynthesis, you can then look around it and say, how does it relate to math, to physics, other ideas? The whole point is if a student learns these concepts, they have adequate knowledge to get through high school. And all of the content at CK12 is organized in this way. CK12 content is multimodal, which means the following. Every student learns differently. And on CK12, it's not just a textbook page on a concept. It could be a video. It could be an interactive simulation. It could be an adaptive practice modality. Any way a student wants to learn, you can do. Um, here again are some of the concept, uh, the content assets that constitute what CK12 is. About 250,000 primary textbooks that are available open source and free to any student anywhere who wants to use it. Buried in those are structured 8,000 concepts along with their metadata. Uh, those 8,000 concepts on average have five modalities and I'll come back and talk a little more about what modalities mean. There's 215,000 questions about those concepts, so you can test students on them. Uh, and I won't go through every one of these, but you get the idea. Now, those 250,000 textbooks I talked about can be customized within a state standard. So if I'm teaching 
for Indian standards or California state standards, I can customize to that standard. And then within that, each teacher can customize to what they want to teach within the state standards. So when you look at CK12 Flexbooks, they've been customized 170,000 times by various teachers, and other teachers then use these customized things. But the content goes beyond that. Not every student in a classroom is at the same level. So some students are behind, some in remedial, and others are ahead of the rest of the class. So the content is available both as basic, at grade level, and advanced. So if you imagine each of these 8,000 concepts in five modalities on each, in, on average in each, you can actually teach students at different levels at the level at which they are at. Now, to give you an example of what this content looks like, you could have a textbook page, and you've all seen that, so I won't show you that, but a simulation online may actually look something like this. You might be able to simulate, and for some reason, these are videos that aren't playing, uh, but you can simulate at the angle of an aircraft what the lift and drag is and what might cause it to stall. And that makes it much more visual for students who are learning. And then there's interactives. It means in many subject areas, you can interact with the content. An example, uh, again, I apologize because it's not simulating. Uh, but in algebra, you may have an equation, and you might move x and see how y responds for that equation. So you can do complex algebra through, an, through, through this kind of an interactive uh, system. In addition to all that, there's always a community aspect of learning. And so, if a student is stuck, they can go to their community called the cafe, and you can actually interact with other students. They could be your state students, students in your high school, other students who are studying the same subject. Uh, it's a powerful system and an all-complete system to do all aspects of learning through K, from K through 12. So, why are students and teachers coming to this system? There's, of course, the core curriculum. There is all sorts of supplemental materials, and a lot of students use it this way. By the way, I think it's criminal that even in a state like California, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, are spent on textbooks that are paper-based, not interactive, and a real waste of money but uh, unfortunately true, and hopefully all of us can together change it. Each of these, this content, uh, uh, all of this content is customizable, standards aligned, interactive, and there's lesson plans for teachers. So the goal is to make it easier for both the student to let them learn in the way they want to learn, but also to uh, make it easier for the teacher with lesson plans. It's probably one of the few systems where a teacher could actually assign a different problem to each student based on where they're at. And that kind of customization is not possible without the help of technology tools. And remind you again, it's all open source and free. It also lets students do adaptive practice at home. Uh, the simulation uh, is not running, but that's OK. I'll skip past that. There's assignments and homeworks. Um, so that's the basic platform. Um, 
and it has lots of capabilities, and our hope is other people will come custom, use the platform to build their own things on top. There's a couple of other things that become very important. Every student or every teacher might want to teach the content or the curriculum in a different way. So if you imagine a concept map and a student wants to take a particular path through it, they can. And if you have a different student, they can take a different path through it. By the way, the content is on every platform, so you might imagine it's uh, available. Let me talk about one area we do need help in next, which is it's open source. It's available in mostly English, some Spanish translations, but we'd love to have the community's help in translating it to other languages so it's available to kids in their native language. There's too many languages around the world for us to do, but being open source is what makes it very amenable to the rest of the world helping customize that to their native language. Let me now talk about something that I'm passionate about. The system has intelligence. Uh, all of the content can feed into models and algorithms system intelligence that can extremely personalize it. Now, I talked a little bit about adaptive content earlier, uh, but this is the next level of machine intelligence. And it is what leads to personalized learning. So let me um, spend a minute on the intelligent system that CK12 is built. The details here don't matter. But there's a fairly large system with a lot of usage data there. And it's this usage data that's going to be very, very important. Um, of course, all the content interactions are there from all these students. The time to complete any given task is there for every student. Questions answered, questions missed, you get the point. So all this material is there. And that leads me to my final point in maybe the most important thing that this community can do to help us. It is to build a personalized AI tutor for every kid on the planet. They can get the level of attention that those of us who can afford personal tutors for our children can get. It can be highly customized. It isn't dependent upon having the resources. In a place like India, in rural India, 40% of teachers may be absent from their classroom any one day. So this notion of a caring teacher teaching is not a luxury most people have. So it's very, very important we build this. Anybody here interested in participating in that, we'd love to collaborate. Your, our next speaker is actually building something like this, so we'll be we're very fortunate to meet and collaborate here. Let me stop here and say almost anybody who wants to participate in this can reach me at vk at coastalventures.com, and we'd love your help in building this personal tutor. Thank you all very much.